Most medications have their drug concentration listed in milligrams per milliliter, and that makes things pretty easy. But some have it listed as a percentage, and this is the case with medications like lidocaine, dextrose, or albumin, and others use ratios, and that's the case with epinephrine. But when you come across a percentage, how many milligrams per milliliter of medication are you actually giving? That's what I'll be covering in this lesson, and I'll also give you some handy shortcuts to use. So what is a percentage or a ratio actually telling you? It's giving you the drug's concentration in grams per milliliter. Grams per milliliter. That's the important concept. Now, I don't know why this was set as the standard, but that's what it is. So let's take a look at percentages first. Remember, we're dealing with grams per ml. So the percent in this case is going to give you grams of medication per cent. That is per 100 mls. So let's take a familiar example. D50, that's dextrose 50% in water. We know that a pre-filled syringe of D50 has 25 grams of dextrose in 50 mLs of solution. If I reduce this fraction, I get one half gram per mL. One half is 50%. So there's our concentration and percentage. But to figure out how many milligrams per mL I'm giving of D50, all I have to do is convert units. Now, if you haven't already, please watch my video on drug calculations, which is linked here, because it'll help clarify the conversions I'm about to perform. So let's start with that same pre-filled syringe of D50. That's 25 grams of dextrose and 50 mLs of solution. I'm going to convert the grams to milligrams, like so. And that leaves me with 500 milligrams per mL. And now it's easy to see that the shortcut with drug percentages is to take the percent and add a zero in order to get the milligrams per milliliter. So that means that lidocaine 2% is 20 milligrams per mL. Lidocaine 1% would be 10 milligrams per mL. D5 in water would be 50 milligrams per mL of dextrose. And albumin 25% would be 250 milligrams per mL. So this shortcut will work with any medication that has its concentration listed as a percentage, as long as the amount of medication is being measured in mass units, which means grams or milligrams. If you see milliequivalents, like, for example, with sodium bicarbonate, you can't use this shortcut. Now, if you're still in school, on some exam questions, you may be asked to come up with the drug percentage. I'm not going to cover how to do that here. It's pretty easy. But today, I'm keeping my focus on things that are relevant at the bedside. Okay, now let's switch gears and tackle ratios. So you'll see ratios used with epinephrine concentrations. And again, it's the same concept. You're being given the concentration in grams per ml. So let's take epi 1 to 10,000, which is the pre-filled syringe in the code cart. If we turn 1 to 10,000 into a fraction, we get 1 gram in 10,000 mLs. I can then convert this into milligrams per mL as shown. And that gives me 1 milligram in 10 mLs, which is 1 tenth of a milligram per mL, or 0.1. So here's the shortcut for ratios. Notice in the calculation I just performed, all I did was knock three zeros off of the second number. And so when you're dealing with ratios, such as 1 to 10,000, all you have to do is ignore the last three zeros. So 1 to 10,000 becomes 1 milligram in 10 mLs. And that's the 10 mL pre-filled syringe that we keep in the code cart. This is IV epinephrine because it's more dilute. 1 to 1,000 becomes 1 milligram in 1 mL. This is the 1 ml ampule. It's more concentrated, and that's why this is what we give for IM injections. See? Not so difficult after all. So remember, the key to understanding percentages and ratios when it comes to drug concentrations is that it's being reported to you in grams per milliliter. The shortcut for percentages is just add a zero on the end, and that gives you milligrams per ml. And the shortcut for ratios is just to ignore the last three zeros. If you like the content, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified of new videos. And as always, don't aim to memorize, aim to understand so that you can apply what you've learned. Thanks for watching.